It's still a mystery to me why people listen to me, but if I had to guess, it's focused around two things. And I had this as my Twitter bio for a long time, and that was truth and love. And what do I mean by truth and love? Because these are overloaded terms. I mean the scientific and the spiritual. It's rare for someone to publicly confess that they're interested in both because they seem somewhat mutually contradictory, but they aren't. In an older age, it was perfectly fine for scientists to be religious, but these days it looks down upon because the whole idea of old man in the sky giving you a bunch of rules seems ludicrous. Is God really a white bearded male who's kind of laid down a bunch of commandments that somewhat seem obsolete? After all, where would he stand? Obsolete? After all, where would he stand? So now it's fashionable to be an atheist. But even an atheist, I would say, is a bridge too far because you just don't know. And how can you not be curious about the ultimate mystery, the mystery of existence itself? So as I like to say, existence itself is a miracle. Everything else is science. So when I say truth and when I say love, it's actually the same search. It is the search for, as Jacob Bernowski said, unity within variety. We see all of these different forms and then we try to connect them all together to make sense of the whole thing. We go from the individual to the whole. In science, when you connect two disparate things together, that's the aha moment and you get a rush from that. And it's different than the normal dopamine rush. It's the rush, the light of understanding. In spirituality, and yes, I don't love that word because it's so overloaded, but in spiritual terms, when you connect yourself to the greater whole, you feel awe. And awe is the corresponding equivalent to the aha moment in science. But now it is that connection moment in spirituality when you no longer feel alone and afraid, but you feel one with everything and you feel whole. Again, you see the unity in the variety. In this case, the variety being the individual forms of people, but now you see the union in the spirit. And I think both are worth pursuing for a complete life. You have to find truth and you have to find love. And these are both individual pursuits. Truth is best served by adopting the philosophy of the Royal Society, which was nullius en verba. Take no one's word for it. Figure it out yourself. Doesn't mean you have to reinvent the whole wheel yourself. In fact, if you were sitting out there by yourself in the woods, you probably wouldn't even discover fire before you died. So obviously you have to stand on the shoulders of giants, but verify what you can. Use truth, logic, reason, uh, deduction, uh, occasional confirmation, verification, checking. Uh, yes, rely on experts up to a point, but check those experts themselves, including me and anybody else who talks to you. But <clears throat> take no one's word for it, especially when it becomes political or when it becomes self-interested and confirm it for yourself. And so you can use science, logic, the methods of deduction to figure things out. And as David Deutsch and Karl Popper have pointed out, truth is a never ending business. You're never going to get to the complete finished ultimate truth. Uh, there is no justified true belief, as they like to say. So you have to keep iterating. And every truth-seeking system works in roughly the same process. In evolution, it's variation and selection. In capitalism, it's creation of companies and their destruction. In uh, science, it is conjecture and criticism and so on and so forth. So you keep trying new things and you see what works. And that's your best answer at the moment. And then later, you find a better truth, which explains a previous thing, plus something else that was unexplained before. In science, you can somewhat take other people's word for it because ultimately, if it's truly scientific, it's verifiable and checkable by yourself. That's why the uh, replicatability crisis in psychology is damning. It disqualifies most of psychology as a so-called science because you cannot replicate it. If the results don't replicate, it's not science. If you can't verify it for yourself, given sufficient time and resources, it's not science. Truth seeking in the spiritual domain is different. It has to be direct experience. If you can't verify it through logic and reason, then you have to go through direct experience. Again, take no one else's word for it. Just because they tell you, just because it's written down in a holy book and this is going to trigger all the right people, that's not good enough. Um, you do have to be able to verify it for yourself. Therefore, I believe that the only truth in spirituality is along the lines of the mystics. And every religion has had its mystics. I think in Persian or uh, Islamic religions, that was the Sufis. Um, in Hinduism, of course, it's all the Buddhas and the Gurus. Um, and so on. And even Christianity, St. Augustine and others were mystics. And what a mystic does is a mystic tries to establish their own direct relationship to the spiritual. They have their own direct experience 
experience to rely upon and they don't have to take anyone else's word for it. Ultimately, we are bewildered and confused little creatures. We spring into existence and we have no idea how we got here. Why am I a monkey? Why do I exist in three dimensions? Why am I on a planet called Earth? Why do I have two arms and two legs? Why am I only here for a short period of time? Why do all these thoughts go through my head? What is my purpose? How long have I got? These are the ultimate questions and there's no avoiding them. Only the most incurious and insensitive person would avoid them. Okay, that's not fair. If your life has very difficult things going on, you're too busy with survival, so you can't avoid them. But yet, we feel deeply alone. But then there's a massive contradiction. We also feel connected. We all share the same kind of consciousness. We all share existence. We all look at this miracle of life about us. We all feel deeply connected when we look at nature, and we look at animals, and we look at children. So there's something deep and important going on here, but we can't put our finger on it. We feel alone, yet as Bohr has said, we feel like we have lost something infinite. We have disconnected ourselves from a greater whole. And this urge just does not go away and it keeps re-manifesting itself in all kinds of ways. One simple way you can see that is everybody seeks something greater than themselves whether it's a children, whether it's religion, whether it's a political system, whether it's a belief, but everybody wants to sacrifice themselves to something else because there is no surer source of unhappiness than constantly just thinking about yourself over and over and over. Love is the feeling of connection. It is the feeling of no longer being alone. It is loving someone more than yourself and connecting to them or being loved by someone and feeling that they're reaching out to you and you are no longer alone. Truth is a feeling of connection. It is knowing that your little observation does not stand by itself. It connects into a logic, a greater logic and a greater whole. And what better way to do that through than science? Wizardry and magic and spells, I know people fantasize about it, but it would be the worst possible outcome. We already have wizardry and spells. That's called scientific rules, technology, logic, understanding. And these are spells that we can all cast. These are spells that we can all learn. You don't have to go to Hogwarts. Just go, on to, go online and start reading or talking to an AI and have it start teaching you. So we have the best of all possible worlds. We have the miracle of existence and we can seek the truth of that, which will manifest as love and spirituality. And we have the truth of science, which we can pursue through logic logic and reason, and all of us can become spellcasters in our own right. So I'm not sure there's a meaning to life, but if there is, the closest thing is that we are trying to find the whole within the parts. And we can do that best, I believe, by pursuing science and spirituality simultaneously.